Guys, the stock market has jumped higher now that the Fed not only didn't raise rates, which was not a surprise, but they have now indicated that they will cut rates sooner than had been expected. Why are they saying this now? Is it because they see the economy weakening or is it because of something else? Let's take a look. So this Zero Hedge article says now it all makes sense. So you see here in just two weeks from December 1st, the Fed said it is premature to speculate on rate cuts. Now, December 13th, they're discussing timeline to start rate cuts. So Powell went from saying it is premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance or to speculate on when policy might ease. And just less than two weeks later, he goes to a warning that rate cuts are something that begins to come into view and is clearly a topic of discussion out in the world and also a discussion for us at our meeting today. So even Nick Timoreas, who the Fed leaks information to when they want it to become public, says the Powell pivot begins and what a difference two weeks can make. So what's the reason for the Fed wanting to accelerate the rate cuts all of a sudden? Well, Zero Hedge looks at the main economic reports that came out between December 1st and December 13th to see if there's any clues there. So the ISM services PMI is a clear beat and a rebound, so nothing negative there. The jobs report was a beat and a improvement from the previous report. And even the unemployment rate dropped from 3.9 to 3.7%, a big drop in the unemployment rate. Average earnings for U.S. employees were up, which is also positive or inflationary, you can say. So the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index jumped from 61.3 to 69.4, and they were only expecting it to be like 62. So it exceeded that expectation by a lot. Also very positive economically. And the Consumer Price Index report in November came out slightly hotter than expected. And even the retail sales report had its fifth consecutive beat in a row. So looking at the financial conditions index, the higher it goes, the tighter financial conditions are, the worse things are. So the higher would indicate that things are getting bad and maybe they should cut. Well, up here at the peak, they said tighter financial conditions likely to weigh on economic activity. So that could be a reason for them to want to cut. But this was mid-October. Now, in December, when they're talking about cutting, the financial conditions have loosened all the way back down to levels from June. And so looking at the differences in the dot plots between September 20th and December 13th, the dot plots is each FOMC member's projections for where interest rates will be by the year end in 2024. All right, so this means only one of them expected interest rates to be above 5.5%. And this means two of them expected interest rates to be below 4.5%, maybe 4.4% or something like that. But you see nine of them expected interest rates to be above 5% by the end of 2024, while the rest expected interest rates to be lower than 5% by the end of 2024. This was the September dot plot. Here is the December meeting dot plot. Now only three of them expect interest rates to be over 5% by the end of 2024. So this is a chart of the March Fed rate cut expectations. You see back in September, it was only like a 10% chance of a March 2024 Fed rate cut. More recently, it was as much as 60% dropped back down to 40%, but now it is about 74% that they will cut rates in March. So this is a look at the rate cut expectations between 2024 and 2025. 2025 is red, 2024 is green. And this goes back to just December 8th. You see they're right around the same range 
until after this meeting. Now, all of a sudden, for the election year, they're expecting instead of minus 1.2 percentage points, now they're expecting minus 1.47 percentage point reduction. And for the non-election year, 2025, it's a drop in expectations of about the same amount. So basically, that extra rate that they were expecting for 2025 to drop by like a quarter point in 2025, they're pushing it out now into 2024 for an extra 25 basis point reduction. So why the big about face from December 1st to December 13th? Well, here's a poll of Biden versus Trump. Biden in blue, Trump in red. And you see going back to September, Biden was either ahead or just about even with him. And in the last few months, he was actually ahead. But now, just in the last few days, really, two weeks or so, Biden is now trailing Trump. So Zero Hedge is saying maybe they got a call from the Biden administration saying that they need to increase the rate cuts, even though they're still keeping the 2026 projected Fed funds rate unchanged at 2.875. They want to pull one rate cut forward out of the non-election year 2025 and bring it into the 2024 pre-election year. And so people will say, well, the Fed is apolitical, so they would never yield to that kind of pressure, right? Well, even the New York Times talks about a story from 1965 with a dramatic interaction between U.S. President LBJ and then Fed President Martin, who hiked rates by half a percentage point, infuriating the Democratic president. So at the Board of Governors meeting, he voted to raise half a percentage point to four and a half percentage points, but he conceded that raising the rate would essentially wave a red flag before the critics of an independent Federal Reserve in Congress and in the White House. We should be under no illusions, he told his colleagues. A decision to move now can lead to an important revamping of the Federal Reserve System, including its structure and operating methods. This is a real possibility, and I have been turning it over in my mind for months. And so Martin was summoned to explain why he defied the president. And so when he went to meet him at his ranch, according to different accounts, the six foot four Johnson pushed the shorter Martin up against the wall. You went ahead and did something that you knew I disapproved of that can affect my entire term here. And this is Martin recalling this later in history. And he says, you took advantage of me and I'm not going to forget it because here I am, a sick man. You've got me in a position where you can run a rapier into me and you've run it. Martin, my boys are dying in Vietnam and you won't print the money I need. And he says, he said, I knew you disapproved of it, but I had to call the shot as I saw it. So will the Fed really lower rates sooner than the dot plots indicated just a few days ago? I think they will if they think they can get away with it without bringing back inflation. If economic reports start to show that inflation is coming back like it did back in the 1970s when it dipped and then came back up, things could change very quickly. Of course, Wall Street doesn't care about that. They just want lower rates or even the promise of lower rates to get the stock market higher, especially for the year end when investors look at how their investments did and Wall Street gets paid for their yearly performance. But it is an election year and I expect everything will be done to keep the stock market up, even if it costs us more down the road. Guys, it's the same as it always was. Invest accordingly.